Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Meet the Artist. I am Joan Turner, podcaster for the Greater Halo Arts Association and bookkeeper as well. And we have lots of fun introducing our members to you. And today we have someone really, really special that I'm going to be introducing you to in a very few minutes. But before I do, I want to tell you that you can, um, oh, wait, let me see here. Okay. All right, podcaster <laughs> in training. Okay, so I want to tell you that the Greater Haven Arts Association has many events coming up. And let me see if I can find them for you. Let me see, event calendar. All right, we have our members exhibit. Okay, and like I said, we have these extremely awesome members and you get to meet them here on our Meet the Artist podcast. Okay, we have a GHA Summer Members Exhibit and that is coming up soon. Um, Buttonwoods Museum, uh, July 2nd to July 31st. So uh, the works will be on exhibit for, uh, for most of the month of July. Is 240 Water Street is where Buttonwoods is. And then one of my favorites, actually all my favorites, I haven't found one that I kind of like more than, more than others, but my next favorite one coming up is the Havel Art Festival. Now we do that on Bradford Common and it's on South Main Street. Okay, and we're doing that from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, 2021 Haver Art Festival will be held on the Bradford Common on Saturday, September 11th. Okay, now September 11th has special meaning for all of us, and now it's something even more special. And uh, one of our members has a mom who is very talented, so she will be coming in with some of her friends and entertaining us that day, uh, and her name is Lucia. Okay, and I belong to the Greater Haver, uh, no, Greater Haver Arts Association. I do belong, but I also belong to the Southern New Hampshire Ukulele Group. And we have been playing at the Haver Art Festival for years and years and years. And we're part, practically a staple. Okay, so we will be there also from 11 to 1 playing our ukuleles and entertaining you. Okay. So let me tell you, without further ado, I want you to meet special artist, come meet the artist, Sarah Dugan. Welcome, Sarah. Okay, everyone. So here, this is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining us today. We're really, really excited to have you. Okay, good evening. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Are you enjoying this weather? I'm telling you, we've been having some decent weather out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I just waiting, just waiting on the sun and just, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to stand here for a while. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So we we want to know all about you, anything that you're willing to share, like how and when did you become an artist? What made you interested? <laughs> oh, goodness. Um like when I was three. Oh. Yeah. I don't remember exactly when I became an artist. Um, both my parents are, are super creative. Um, my mom is really heavily into um, the craft sphere. Um, she has uh, always been a beautiful seamstress and needlework and, and kind of that vernacular. Nice. And then my dad is um, definitely more of the, what would, one would consider the traditional artist. Um, he, was, uh, he went to Holy Cross for a studio art degree and art history degree. And um, his first job out of college, he was managing a print shop at a hospital which he would always bring home art supplies with us when we were really, really little. And um, so I all, we always had paper around and um, markers and pencils and all of that stuff to create. And we also, you know, like a lot of um, kids from the 70s and Gen Xers, I grew up in, uh, I started off in upstate New York and, you know, we weren't a very well off family. Um, when we were real little, when my parents were still married and, um, you know, we didn't have a lot. So, you know, we'd make our own fun with all the paper, you know, we, 
we create our own coloring books and we create our own um, things to entertain ourselves. So that's kind of where it all started. I think that's totally cool. Plus, in a way, you are kind of forced to use your imagination at a very yeah. young age. So it's like everything for a purpose, right? Right. Totally, totally understand that. And when you were talking about crayons and, and this and that, I'm thinking to myself, did she always end up with them on the paper? You know, sometimes <laughs> I would get them on the floor and on the wall, and I'd be eh, I'd be in trouble all of the time. Oh, I would be in trouble. My mom would, um, my mom was at the time she was a, uh, a registered nurse. So she would often work the uh, 11 to seven shifts. So my, so somebody was always home so they wouldn't have to pay for childcare. So if it was, oh, you're waking up your mom, you knew we had to go running. So yeah, yeah. You knew you're in deep yoga there. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. So, so how did you actually learn? So at a very young age, you were kind of interested in cre being creative. Yep. In a way. And, and my dad started trying to teach me certain basic skills that he had learned when he had gone through um, getting uh, his college degree. But eventually, one of my first kind of official learning experiences is I had taken a um, watercolor class at it. So it, it's now known as part of Pratt Institute, um, Pratt College. And um, Sorry, I have some feline friends that may be making appearances this while we're doing the this podcast. Because I thought I saw a tail go by, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm seeing things, you know? So yeah. I'm glad you said that. I was yeah, like, so we, getting a little bit nervous. There's <laughs> four of them, so they're, they I love like it. to make appearances. I love it. Um, so anyways, my first official class was at a place <laughs> called the Munson Williams Proctor Institute. And... Um, that is located in Utica, uh, which is in upstate New York. And it's now a part of the Pratt, um, the Pratt kind of ecosphere. And it's really neat because when we, so I, I teach high school art and photography. And when we have reps coming in, it's you really teach that now? Have, you teach art and photography I do. now? That I do, so cool. I do. What grades, what grades do you teach? High school, high school. High school. So nice. the whole gamut. Yeah, yeah. But um, when we have their their reps come in and it's really fun to hear about um, things that I remember as a little kid that I can share that with my students. So nice, nice, nice. So did you actually have a mentor? Some, I mean, it sounds like your father was your first yeah. mentor. Okay, yeah. So was there someone in my mom and my mom, too, in a yeah. in, in a creative way. Nice. Um, eventually, when I got to high school, um, you know, we moved uh, to Massachusetts, you know, later on in elementary school. And um, I moved to Easton and the, the structure of the schools back then, you moved around in schools a lot. So it was hard to connect with an art teacher until I got to high school. And um, I met uh, Arnie Cassavant, who is a fairly well-known regional and plein air painter nice. um and he was definitely and he still is a huge inspiration for me nice. um and he's just the bee's knees um i just <laughs> really admire him uh yeah. both as an artist he was the first art teacher i saw that actually had a practice he went on sabbatical when i was uh still a student and he was able to generate this beautiful body of work he had this amazing show when we I remember going to him at Stonehill College and I just thought it was so cool that he, not only did he teach but he was also an artist and because other teachers didn't you didn't have a chemistry teacher that was actually a chemist or a math teacher that you know did math thing you know they just good were teachers point. good point yeah and you had this art teacher that actually did what he was teaching so I thought that was so cool and very inspirational um, and it really, you know, I also had um, artists in my family, people that I looked up to. I have uh, Karen Dugan, who is my Aunt Karen, uh, my, uh, on my dad's side, she um, worked for Little Brown and Company. She was a children's book illustrator. Um, oh. She's on hiatus right now um, because of some, her husband's health issues, my Uncle Paul's health issues, but she is just one of the most gifted um, children's book illustrators and she had gone to RISD. And so with all of these kind of influences going on, you know, it really kind of guided me towards that fine art path. So that that's amazing. That's amazing. So actually, you're kind of surrounded by it. You had no choice. I did. Nope. <laughs> nope. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Love it. 
So now obviously, yeah, part of the Great Haven Arts Association. Do you yep. hang out with other associations as well? I am also a current member of the Newburyport Art Association. Um, yes, exactly. Yep, in the past, um, I've also been a member of the Provincetown Art Association. Um, I spent many summers down there uh, working. I, uh, unfortunately, not a person of, of leisure, so um, <laughs> I was I able- I understand that. I think all artists should just have this flux of money coming in so we could just for <laughs> all day. I don't get it. Someone screwed I, it up. I have uh -huh. to say, I did go to school with a couple of people like that. I was very jealous. Nice. But, yeah. Nice. Um, but I, anywho, I, I, I was a member of theirs previously, and I do like their association quite a bit. Um, and to be, to be honest, I'm just within the last few years gotten back into um, showing in galleries and stuff for about, about 20, 22 years, I was doing wedding photography. No way. And yeah, and that really took up the bulk of my time as far as being able to be creative and generating work. A lot of my yeah. own personal work went by the wayside. Yeah. So I'm just now kind of trying to break out and do more with that and um, amass a better body of work. That That's amazing to me. I am, do some amateur photography and um, myself and my ex, we did some work for someone's wedding. We did take pictures. The amount of editing and yeah. time it takes to do that, I was like, no, I am so not doing so not doing this. So God bless you. God bless you. That is so much work. It Hopefully. was a good 20 years. I really wow. um, in the, the industry, I think that um, first digital and then um, social media has really changed the game a lot. Yeah. And um, as I mentioned, I do work full time as an art teacher, and it's yeah. very challenging in this day and age with um, the level of service you do have to provide to your customers for me to do both well. And I said, you know, it's not fair to my um, my clients. And so I said, you know, I'm going to I'm going to reshift my priorities as an artist and, and kind of go back to my fine art roots. So. so I have to ask you, because of uh, the pandemic, which hopefully we're kind of at the end of all that craziness. How did, how did that affect you school-wise and trying to keep up everyone's morale and all that good stuff? How did you do all that? It was it was a challenge. Um, I had some students, honestly, I had some students that really blossomed. Um, they may, may have had anxiety or um, reluctance to go to school that really blossomed in the virtual space. Nice. Um, I had some students that didn't, and I had some that were very neutral about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if for some of them, the staying home wasn't the hard part. It was the hybrid that was the hard part. Um, honestly, some I've some of my students I've gotten my the best work out of this year. They've had so much um, to talk about in their work, so it's given them a lot to express, and they want to and they want to express it. So it's been not I I, I get a little. Uh, Push, I have a little pushback sometimes with the way the media portrays um, the way the kids have been viewing this past year as a year of loss. And I, I look at it as I'm like, they just experienced it differently. Um, sometimes I wonder if it's us adults that are catastrophizing it and pushing that on teens and little kids rather uh, than- You and I could have such a long, long conversation of that. Plus, yeah. I think this. I think the subject matter matters. It does. You know what I mean? Art. Yeah. You're right. People are going through all of these emotional things. So art is kind of an outlet. And it does. allows them to speak their feelings or show their feelings. So probably, probably the subject matter is an issue. But yeah, you're absolutely right. I found exactly the same things. Um, yep. I'm semi-retired, so I don't teach in school anymore. But um, I do have students and absolutely they go through, you know, they go through these emotional up and ups and downs, you know, and some of them, you know, like you would do virtual and some in person. So, um, so yeah, it, it's not easy, easy. Do you have some work that you could show us? I, I would do. love to see I it. I do. What's your I medium? Have... What's your medium? What do you like to work in? 
Um, what I tend to show is a lot of either um, my alternative processes or um, my uh, straight photography. So, so what are my the back alternative processes? What is that all about, woman? So, <laughs> it's, so we have regular, you know, the regular photography. Most people are familiar with that. You point a camera at it, it comes out as a picture. So one of the things that when we went digital as a society and when a lot of photographers went, uh, went that way, I, I, one of the things I missed was um, that, you know, when I went into photography, I missed that hands-onness of the studio, of drawing and painting and that tactile quality. And then when we stepped away from film, it was even one more step away. I felt, you know, I, I love um, technology, but I like it in a time and place. And um, one of the things I started exploring more were some of the um, eight, uh, processes you found in the, the 19th century, like in the 1800s that really? um, people like William Henry Fox Talbot discovered with salt printing. Or I, one of the things that I really love to work with is cyanotype. And that is where- Say again, you, say again, cyan, cyanotype. cyanotype. And what is it? Cyan? It's, it's a combination of iron-based salts where you combine them together, uh, coat a porous surface, and oh, expose cool. it to the sun, basically. It's all UV processed. Another reason I started exploring all these processes is a lot of times you don't need a dark room, so it made it very easy yeah. to do in my house. That is so, so I didn't cool. Need a dark, yeah, you don't need like safe lights and stuff. You need a dim room to coat the papers, but you just Put the shades down and turn off the lights you know you don't need like a red light and all these crazy setups so i use that a lot um i've been exploring different surfaces for that i've been combining it with encaustics and and just kind of having some fun with that oh my god i just so want to see that that sounds fantastic show okay. me show me that's so, some good stuff yeah, I, I pulled up some stuff from my website and I have a couple of small pieces that are also on my website. So you can kind of maybe uh, get a better sense of them rather than digital upon digital upon digital viewing. Okay. So you see I, I, oh, share. I think I'm sharing my own instead of yours. Wait. So should I hit, oh, there we go. <laughs> Is that me or you? That's me. Oh, that's, that's you. That's me. <laughs> You are sharing. Stop sharing, Joan. So share should I share my screen? I want to share your screen. Wherefore, Arthur. Okay. I have to confess I'm much better on the Google platform. We've been using it all really. year. Yep. So are we seeing mine again? Yeah. Oh, God love us. All right. Invites. Share screen. Sarah. Uh, participants. Closed captions, mute invite. I have no idea. Oh, wait, I take it back. You are screen sharing. Is this you? No, no that's, this is me too. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what I think I want to do, let's uh, just, okay, my screen sharing is paused. New okay. share is where all right select the screen go. Okay, stop share all right so let me see here it I says that okay i think we got a technical defugal please figure it out <laughs> so without further ado show us this this cool stuff you're doing uh yes i am trying to i don't know if we have all right, let's do this, share. Sorry, I'm on a Mac and so it's going to- Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry. On Mac. I'm on me. Windows. This Take technology is wonderful when it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. so we have a lot of cool stuff coming up in GHAA. We have our members meet coming up the summer members meet coming up and we have our um, arts festival, which is on Bradford Common. 
And before you got on, I was bragging to everyone that I play in a ukulele group and that we're going to be playing there. All kinds of cool stuff. All right. It is not letting me share still. It's not letting you share. Well, no. I'm dipped. Okay. So this is uh, my website, uh, just to click through. I'm a big, uh, I'm a big Apple and Adobe fan that kind of comes from my wedding photographer days. And this is all done with my Adobe portfolio. Okay, so um, what I'm seeing here is it says screen recording. So I'm not seeing pictures. I'm seeing a, a, a dialogue box. Okay, that's weird. Okay, now we're seeing these beautiful pictures. Okay, oh, um, so from my uh, wedding photographer um, days, I really got embedded in the Adobe suite and um, really uh as you i mentioned before i'm on the apple platform so this is kind of where i come at when i start uh putting out stuff for my work and um oh my under God. my fine art work as i mentioned i work with a lot of alternative processes so this is an example of simple um botanical um cyanotype it's done on cotton cloth and the cloth is toned. And then what you do is you coat the cloth. I actually um, have this wonderful vendor that actually I work with out on the West Coast in Washington uh, called, called Blueprints on Fabric. And she wow. does the most beautiful um, fabrics and it, it's really a little bit easier to just pre-purchase from her. Um, these beautiful fabrics that you can, she does silks and she does linens and all this stuff. And, Working with her, her, her product has just been a delight just to do Lovely. a little Lovely. pat on her back. Um, and just working, I love working with botanicals. Um, there's something just very, oh, I can't even think about it. Just very non-judgmental non about just working with nature, um, working with, with specifically non groom I guess non-groomed botanicals like I don't go looking for you know really ornate flower gardens half the time it's weeds I'm picking in my backyard because I'm always looking at shape and I'm looking at um the way I can compose it on a page I'm also a sucker for asymmetry as well um so both either in the object itself or how i put it on the page i i absolutely love asymmetry and i love um odd numbers so yeah, i was just gonna say you are a true artist weeds yeah. are beautiful we love it and <laughs> um so let's see this is oh. one of uh, this is i have the companion piece of this particular one with me so this is one of the um cyanotype processes that i've been experimenting call with called um wet cyanotypes so instead of letting the paper dry before you start making your print uh -huh. you actually just leave it wet and you start sprinkling like um salt and turmeric and all of these beautiful spices on it to kind of uh have these wonderful chemical reactions with the, okay. the question salt and irons. question i have done salt i've done the salt thing mm -hmm. turmeric and other turmeric. spices do they yep react differently because they're a different spice yeah and it it kind of segued into a new little um discovery i made this past well i didn't make it but i brought into my practice this past winter uh with anthotypes which is using just botanical matter to make uh images so you do a slurry of uh turmeric and uh 90 rubbing alcohol together coat the paper and then you just leave your negative on top of it for you know a couple of days oh my God. and it makes it actually makes an image so and is this your own procedure that you thought up or did no 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 this? this is this has been around as gosh really and it's it's this whole you know the the the, the gentleman class, the genteel class of the 1800s, especially over in Great Britain, you know, this is what they did. These gentlemen, they, they 
were like amateur chemists and they just spent their time experimenting and figuring out all these things. Like I said, Sir William Henry Fox Talbot was like, you know, this great, he wasn't like a, a chemist in a lab like we think. It's like these, all of these ideas came from these, these men of almost leisure. And I'm very grateful for it in a way because it gives me all these beautiful yeah, things to work that's with. That's amazing. That's amazing. So this was that. And then I, you know, with the gold leaf and I love encasing these things in the encaustic. Um, there's something, first of all, just the smell. I was raised Catholic. So you have that church smell to them. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, and then with the gold leafing and I called this one spring leaves. And then I had a, um, I have its companion piece that I did in silver leaf that I call, um, winter. And it's just kind of like, I love the idea of those, those diptychs and those triptychs, all that art history you study when you're a fine art major, it just kind of sinks into you in certain ways. Nice. So, um, let's see, I'm just trying to. You know, one of the things uh, my husband and I love, and even before we met, love to travel. You know, I, I've just always, one of my biggest regrets, and I always impart this onto my students, is that I never studied abroad. And I, I love, love, love to travel. Um, my husband spent 28 years in the Navy, um, and he has had that tra travel bug uh, scratched there too. And both of us together, we just were always talking about what's our next trip. So I've been really fortunate to um, be able to use my trips as a way to kind of feed some of these processes and my yeah. kind of image bank too. Sure, sure. So, you know, going to, you know, and I love finding like little vignettes like this, like the uh, oars that were on a boat at Lake Derwent. Um, you know, and just taking these little slices of moments in time and kind of just finding something that somebody else might not notice. Are these um, oars? Are these they oars are. on the boat? Yeah, and I so the like, boat- what the heck is that? So the boats are here. Ah. Uh, this is actually a gum by chromate, which, um, you know, folks that are familiar with like say silk screening and the printing process when it comes to commercial printing would be familiar with how one of these are made. Um, you're, it's a layering process where you just start with, um, you know, sort of a CMYK and you just keep layering the images and you have negatives that are all different. Um, like one's a cyan layer, one's a magenta layer, one's a yellow layer. Wow. And you layer the gum bichromates on top of each other. Oh and you God. end up layering it enough to get this picture. How long does something like this take to complete? With the gum, this particular gum, that gum bichromate um, I think there were six layers and this is the best out of probably four or five I was doing concurrently because it's such a delicate process, um, that if you nick it while you're rinsing off all the extra gum bichromate, cause it's very, it's almost gelatinous before it dries. Really? If you nick it. Yeah. The, the print's ruined. It's ruined. So it's so a very you... delicate process. So this was like five or six tries to get this. So I, I, the, I, the way I was working with this is I had three or four going at once. And this is the one that's kind of like, this is the one that made it all the way to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. A survivor. It is a survivor. I love it. Um, wow. So that one, you know, and, and again, back to those little moments and asymmetry, you know, I, I really, you know, especially the life of, of, uh, of a teacher, of an art educator, um, you know, one of my big joys in life is, is working out. I go, I go to CrossFit many times a week. So it's noisy gym, all this stuff, this big, one of the things I like in my artwork is to have these moments of quiet and, and, you know, I, I love, being able to capture the, like I said, these little moments, these little vignettes um, in some of my work. That's and quite beautiful. It really, it's such a still moment in time. Beautiful. And, and I love um, being able to now, the older I get and the more um, tools I get in my tool chest as an artist, being able to go, this is a piece that needs to be done in X and this is a piece and I try to impart that also on my students that not everything's a drawing not everything's a painting 
not everything's a photograph. Sure. Sure. You, you start your when you're an artist, you start um, reading the world. Like I read that as a painting. I read that as a watercolor. I read that as a sketch. And and all of a sudden, understanding that everything has its own, almost its different its own language in a way, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I have a, a other series where um, I'm working with more vintage images and photo montaging along with my own images where I'm incorporating some of my images into the photo montage to make some kind of um, interesting pieces, so. For sure. And I, I, I can, um, if we wanna, we can stop the uh, sharing and I can actually show you a couple of those in real life. I would love that. Um, so one of the, the processes, and it's, it's on the idea, it kind of like, it's like that bridge between, let me just grab one other piece, between, good stuff. It's a bridge between um, my love of illustration, because at heart I am a frustrated children's book illustrator. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm the person that always draws my own Christmas cards and I'm always doing these little gifts for my friends that are little illustrations for their nice. newborn babies and stuff. Um, but I do a lot where I'm, you know, incorporating with my own imagery, but starting it into a photo montage with layers and you can see with the, the yeah. wax and stuff. And is that what it is? It's a layer yeah, it's, of wax. So it's encaustic and it's probably six or seven or eight layers. Wow. But you, you work it and then you scrape it back and you work it and you scrape it back. These are, are transfers onto the wax, but it's my image. And underneath it, you have kind of just tissue paper that you're working into the wax. So it's really- Can you hold uh, it closer to the screen? So it's, it's really a- uh, That's gorgeous. Very nice. It's, it's, thank it's, you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, a petite oh, image. Dish. So do and you then, put do you put a finish on that or is the encaustic the wax? The encaustic is almost yeah. The encaustic okay. is almost its own finish. Okay. You know, I, I usually when I sell them, um, I have like a little card that I paste in the back that talks about how to care for them and stuff. Nice. Nice. And then this oh is you gosh, know I've started. Great incorporating this is a newer piece where I've started incorporating some vintage images in with my own I love, um, I love this tower um, when we were in Stuttgart about a year and a half two years ago um, it just kind of it's a tv tower from the 60s wow. and it was the tallest tv tower at the time when they built it so it was really neat to kind of see it from the bottom and sure. then be up at the top and I have a fear of heights, so that was a really big deal for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So how do you care for an encaustic? I don't know if you saw the Meet the Artist with Lisa Hertel, but she's an encaustic artist too. And did the two of you are totally amazing to me, and you're just doing something totally even different with it. So how do you, now you're saying you have a little card, you tell people how to care for it. So how do you care for it? Because it's wax if it gets too hot in the room is it going to melt i mean yeah. you know well it's not right. pure wax it it is mixed with like a um damar resin resin so okay i i believe that's the mix i usually some people are very purists where they mix all of their own they have their wax they have their mix and they they do their own secret sauce i actually just buy um stuff pre-made from mm -hmm. um the um and i just had a brain fart <laughs> Anyways, I buy mine pre-made pre and um, the RNF, that's the name of the place. Uh, what I usually suggest to people is you want to hang, you can want to hang it in a place where you're not getting direct sunlight. Um, I usually make sure they're cured too. You want to have them sit for a few weeks before you actually put them out. So it's completely hardened. Okay. or as much as possible. You also, you tend to get a little bit of what's called a bloom on the top of it too. Yeah. So a nice soft cloth, you can very gently um, kind of work that bloom off every so often and it will come back because that's just okay. what that happens. That was gonna but, be my next question, does it return? 
And yeah, why does and it, it return? Is it because of the air, the oxygen? What's making that bloom? That's my, you know, in, I am not a chemist. You know, the great thing is I never had to take chemistry after high school once I graduated. That's, that's a very good thing. Um, <laughs> it's a, that's a running joke between my, my husband went to the Naval Academy and our running jokes are like, you know, he's like, what, you didn't take physics in college? And I'm like, what, you didn't take color theory in college? So it's that good, kind of good reason. back and forth. I like it. I absolutely like it. Honestly, I'm sure there's a chemical reason for it. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it's so bad that I didn't come to the podcast a little better prepared with that. Oh, but, no, are um, you kidding? You're doing fine. Absolutely love it. But a little I buff with the have all the shit. answers. Next yeah. time, well, you yes. can have all the answers. <laughs> But I know a little buff with a t-shirt, like a so old t-shirt, nice and soft in it. Good as good as rain, bright as rain. I love it. Love it. Okay. So how long now, how long will that last? Should it last forever? Like, could uh, I hand it down to my niece? My oh, understanding is yes. And, you know, the what I've read about encaustics is one of the ways we found out about it was from ancient Egyptian coffins and such so that's kind of where the start of it was so i this is not a new process i i mean the caustic painting isn't a new process no right, right so right. yeah very cool right so where do most of your ideas and inspirations come from i know you say you like the a symmetry and this and that so you travel and mm -hmm. things catch right what inspires you the most where do those in ideas come from this sounds is so corny, but I absolutely love a good junk store or a flea market. I love that answer. That's great. And one of my uh, one of the things I'm most excited for at the beginning of the summer is Brimfield is back, and Brimfield flea. It's one of the biggest flea markets in the U.S. and it comes around three times a year, and it's at Brimfield, Mass. And before I lived in Merrimack, I actually lived in Worcester for about 13 years. My mom's family is actually from there. She's, they're from Spencer. And I used to go all the time when I lived in Worcester because I was like half an hour away. And it is, it's a to-do. Like if you know Brimfield, you know Brimfield. And I'm so excited to be able to go. And it's supposed to be, all the vendors are supposed to be back. Nice. And it is... It is a flea, it's, it's, it's more than a flea market on steroids. It is the most, if you are into like any sort of like flea market, junk shopping, antique shopping, it's, it runs from $2 trinkets to $2,000 to $20,000. It's amazing. Wow. Wow. wow so wow. that's like one. And I love, I've always loved the forties and the fifties, like the, the style. I mean, there's a lot of horrible things that oh yeah and you like that all 40s and 50s but i love the the and I, it, I think some of it harkens back to my grandparents especially my know. mom's parents there's that nostalgia you have yeah. um and personally i think their outfits were way better than the 80s than when i grew up because nobody wants to remember acid wash jeans so i i don't care what they say <laughs> I'm going on a little limb on that one. Love I it. hope this doesn't get you canceled because I said acid wash <laughs> is bad. Acid wash, Jean, that's it. We're out of here. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. So, so, okay. So old things inspire you. Okay. So you get nostalgic. So what is the most fun for you? Because you do a number of different things, the photography, mm -hmm. the salt, the encaustics. What's the, what's the most fun? Which one do you like the best? Where really put you on the spot? It's hard to say which one I like best because it's like, it's, it's like, well, I don't have kids. I can't say it's like asking you which one's your favorite kid. So that's not fair. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, they're all so different and they all have their purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing with photography is you can, you can go out into the world and there's a spontaneity to it. Whereas with a lot of the process, some of my, the encaustics and the alternative processes, it's sometimes not as spontaneous. Spontaneous. Right. Right. True. Um, and whereas with photography, if I, you know, grab my, even with my iPhone, like, you know, I upgraded a couple of years ago to a better iPhone so I could have almost like a point and shoot in my pocket. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have several oh. film cameras over here. I have a couple of digital cameras over here. There's a, you can make connections when you're taking pictures. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are uncomfortable having, you know, I learned, you know, after 20 plus years of taking pictures at weddings and stuff, people are sometimes uncomfortable taking, having their pictures taken, myself included. And it's almost like a way to bridge a gap, especially when you travel. Yeah. You can, you, it, you know, as long as you're operating within acceptable cultural norms, because some places you go, it's not acceptable to take pictures, right. but right. operating within acceptable cultural norms, you can, that's really not. Yeah, look at that kitty. Oh, what a pretty right. kitty. So now, what's operating kitty's with, name? This, this is Neville. Neville, a, looks like a big snowball. He, he what is. What a pretty yes, kitty. I'll do a snowball. Um, it, it allows you to make a connection. So I, I like sometimes, even if you're not taking a picture of them, if you're taking a picture of something, yeah. people are always like, well, what, what are you doing? What are you taking a picture of? What, especially if I'm using a film camera, yeah. um, I have a, a Bronica ETRSI, which is a medium format film camera with a viewfinder. So I'm taking the picture like this Yeah. and people are fascinated by that. They're like, oh, it's like an old fashioned camera. How does that, oh, can I see what it looks, you know? And they get really um, intrigued. Nice. And so it's kind of neat to have it's that a nice connection. connection. It's a nice connection, for sure, for sure. Even when you're sketching on site too, that's a, yeah. another way. People are like, oh, what are you drawing? Why are you drawing it? What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, and it's right, kind of right. neat to make that connection. That's very cool, very, very cool. So that's the fun thing. What's the most difficult? Like, what do you like? not look forward to in the process. budgeting budget <laughs> i thought you were going to say how long it takes no budgeting. i don't mind how long answer. budgeting no is budgeting yeah, yeah trying yeah. to make sure i, I you budget enough for supplies yeah, yeah framing that was a huge slap in the face when i yeah. started showing again i had mm -hmm. forgot when i first graduated i went to boston university and i have a degree in painting and so when i first graduated you know, I was showing a little bit, just like one does after art school, but nothing serious. And I, you know, I, I was like, oh, I have to frame stuff. And you know, you got out when you do wedding photography, you know, it's pretty much just you, you don't frame stuff. You don't, you know, any profit you make is, you, you know, all of that. It's a different kind of ecosphere. Yeah, when you get sure. back into the gallery atmosphere, it was like, oh, I have to frame this. Oh, that's right. I have to split my, my profits. Oh, I have to do, you know, I have to, to, I have to market myself differently. I have to like all of that stuff and budgeting for it has yeah. been that kind is, of the part I'm not good at. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good point because most of us, we just want to draw and paint and blow yeah. up. We don't want to get involved in the paperwork and the advertising and the this and that. So that's a, uh, that's, yeah, that's a really good observation. Do you have, uh, I have to ask you, do you have a favorite piece that you've done of your own? I'd have to I'm really, told. I'd have to really think about that one yeah, as yeah. far as like a piece that just sticks in my head forever. Um, you know, I have a couple of pieces downstairs. I had started, I had done some long, 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 long time ago, some Polaroid transfers, which um, back when you, you know, the peel apart Polaroid film, you could manipulate it so that the emulsion would transfer onto another surface instead of the, the paper. Totally and those, I know that. Yeah. And those are, I, I have one of some sheep from what the first time I ever went to Ireland. Sheep. Yeah. I, I have it. a thing. Every time I go to Ireland, the UK, I'm like fascinated by the sheep. sheep. And I don't know why. I've been, <laughs> gosh, going on close to eight or nine times between the two places. And I still think those sheep are the, just the, the bee's knees. You might have been a sheep herder in a previous lifetime. Maybe. Maybe they're <laughs> just like wool sweaters. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. It's like, I, I, I do have a sheep. thing for a cardigan. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you have a... Okay, so it sounds like you do a zillion different, do you ever experience a slump where you say, that's it, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore, at least until tomorrow. Uh, 
but not so much like I, I just I'm like, I'm never going to create again. It's yeah. more of I have to not I have to put it off to the side for a little bit because of teaching. And that has been a little bit of a source of frustration for me. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's been I, I take a great amount of joy teaching students and 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 I look at it more especially not so much the the intro levels but like I teach a creative photography course where I do a lot of these alt processes all pros processes with them yeah yeah and um today as a matter of fact all of them finished their final projects and passed them in and I was so proud of them because they just took it to the next level and it was I I truly enjoy those moments. I teach the advanced placement class at my school. And I love seeing them just investigate this topic for the entire year and what they come up. I just, I, it, it really does. I, I, and hearing from students, you know, 10 years later and where they are and taking a little bit of joy, finding out I had a small part to do with that. Like I, I truly do um, love that part of my job, but there's a lot of other things that have started becoming parts of our job. And it, 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 it is a little frustrating that it is impeding me with my creating because life also happens too. You know, you go to work, you teach and you, you still have to do your laundry and you still, you still what have you to mean? Clean. I'm supposed to be doing my laundry. What's up with that? <laughs> I did outsource my house cleaning. So there's that. Um, but you have to do like, you know, you have to do a lot of other stuff too. You have to do the yard work. You have to do the, you know, all these other things. And sometimes there's a couple of weeks that go by where I haven't stepped, really stepped foot in my studio because I'm like, you know, sa Saturday evening comes around and I'm like, I don't have the energy. Yes. And it, that, yeah. that's, that's hard. And that, that me makes me very frustrated and it, it, it gives me a little bit so at times it makes me feel a little imposter syndrome because I want to be a creator, but sometimes it's hard to chisel out that time when it's being filled up so much, which is, you know, some, some, <coughs> excuse me, some teachers live for the summer because they want to live on the beach. I live for the summer because I'm like, okay, now I can have my schedule for creating yep. laid yep. out in front of me. I have all these projects I need to work on. And by projects, I mean art projects, not projects around the house. I mean, I got those two. I'm we like, I, got, I want at, at those least house projects as at work, you know? Yeah. But I, <laughs> you know, I've got stretch your imagination. Yes. Right? Yeah. Really stretch. I'll do it. a Trump loy on the uh, there you go. ceiling or there you something. Go. I totally can relate to that. So if I don't constantly monitor my schedule, I never have time to, I have like yeah. five art projects started and I never finish them. That's definitely frustrating. Totally understand that one. So I know you have a website. Do you also have a Facebook, Twitter, or other social media? How can people get a hold of you, woman? <laughs> well, I have the website. I also uh, use Instagram. So my Instagram is, and I just want to make sure I'm giving the right one because I have a personal one too that is a little saucy so we'll stick away i was from gonna that say one. we might want to see both of them in that no, case no, no. so my <laughs> no, my no, no, my no. my work one is uh for my my artwork is sarah s-a-r-a-h underscore marie underscore dugan with one g d-u-g-a-n so nice. that is my my artwork instagram um i really don't do facebook um mm -hmm. And not, 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 you know, I, I'm trying to dial back my socials. I don't do the snaps and I don't do the ticks and I don't do I'm with all you that on stuff. that one. I do do yeah. Facebook, but the snaps and the ticks, not a nada. What's, nah. your, what's your website address? It, it's sarahmariedugan.com. Cool. Very so, cool. And then I, you know, I'm on LinkedIn because that's what one does oh, as a cool. teacher. So, but that's about it. Okay, so are you taking on new students? Are you putting people on a wait list? Do you do? I, I, I don't actually teach private. I will do private lessons okay. like one-on-one -on -one for cameras. Okay. Like if people want to learn how to use the cameras or um, really intro to photography. Very cool. um, I do um, tend to not, I've, I've done adult ed and I've done um, private lessons before, but um, right now I'm trying to, 
get my own cup full first before I start filling others during the summer. So sure, totally understand that one. And is all or most of you work for sale? People can. Oh, can. yep. Be, okay. All the stuff on the, the website is uh, priced out. Um, you know, Excellent. I have a little bit about, I still do selective um, event photography. So if people are interested in that or portraits, oh, cool. all that's on there too. So. Okay, so you still will go out and do like a wedding or a graduation type thing? Yeah, um, I do. It's usually on a case by case basis. Okay. Um, only because I'm not really promoting myself as that really anymore. Right, um, I'd right. rather take my time to create my artwork, but you know, sure. I have, there are special people that have been in my life before that get married. And I'm like, of course I will. Uh, that's so. great. That's great. Absolutely. Totally enjoyed every second of our conversation. Oh, thank you. Uh, amazing. My darling. This Absolutely. wasn't as nerve wracking as I thought it oh, would no, be. No, it's very low. To low. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Totally. Is there anything else you want us to know about you? No, but um, come to our come to my, come to our show in August at Buttonwoods. So that would be fabulous. Totally, totally agree with that. And come and meet Sarah in person. And you must you must have artwork in that show. Yes. Yes. You will well, have. I, I will be with one other artist. Yay. Yep. Okay. All right, my darling. Thank you so very much. And thank we you. look forward to chatting with you again. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah, very welcome. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.